This is a root cause analysis case study of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge Collapse. We begin on step one of the cause mapping program by defining the problem within the problem outline. We capture the issue, in this case a bridge collapse, the date, November 7, 1940, the time, approximately 10 o'clock a.m., and any differences. In this case, the bridge was extremely narrow relative to its length, and it was a very windy day. We also capture the physical location, in this case in Tacoma, Washington, and the process location. The bridge spanned Puget Sound. We then capture the impact of the goals resulting from the incident. In this case, while there were no injuries, the safety goal is impacted because of the potential for serious injuries. The transportation goal is affected because of the loss of a primary travel route to the Kitsap Peninsula and the loss of revenue from tolls during the outage, estimated to be $1.6 million. The materials and labor goal is impacted because of the complete loss of the bridge, valued at $6 million. The salvage and removal of the damaged bridge, valued at $350,000, and the construction of a replacement bridge, valued at $11.2 million, making the total cost for this instant approximately $19 million. We can also capture the frequency. In this case, this was the first major suspension bridge collapse in the U.S. We use the impacted goals to begin step two, our analysis or our cause map, and we begin with those impacted goals. The transportation goal was impacted due to the loss of travel route and the loss of revenue from tolls. The materials goal was impacted due to the loss of the bridge. We then ask why questions to add more details to the right of our cause map. In this case, all of the impacted goals resulted from the collapse of the bridge. Why did the bridge collapse? Because the suspender cables on the bridge broke. We can continue to add detail by asking why questions. The suspender cables broke because of the high stress on the suspender cables. We can ask what else had to happen to produce this effect to come up with multiple causes joined by AND which result in an effect. In this case, suspender cables broke due to the high stress on the suspender cables and the strength of the cable. In this case, the cable was a standard design. We can continue to add detail where necessary by asking why questions. What caused the high stress on the suspender cables? was caused by the bridge load and weight, the deck hanging from the main cable by the suspender cables due to the design of the bridge, and large twisting motions of the deck. We continue asking why questions to add more detail in this case to the causes of the twisting motions of the deck. Those motions were caused by high amplitude oscillations of the deck. The oscillations were caused because the bridge captured significant wind energy due to the wind force on the bridge and because the bridge deck was weak in torsion. First we will look at the causes of the wind force on the bridge. The wind force on the bridge was caused by a 42 mile per hour wind, the angle of the wind on the front edge of the bridge, and wind acting on a greater surface area due to having solid trusses in the deck. This was because the bridge was constructed as designed with solid trusses as opposed to open trusses. Going back, we can also add more detail to the cause of the bridge deck being weak in torsion. The bridge deck was weak in torsion because the deck was narrow in relation to its length. This was due to the long length of the crossing and the light traffic which necessitated only a two-lane narrow bridge and because of the flexible roadbed. The flexible roadbed was also due to the bridge being constructed as designed. We can add more detail to the construction and design of the bridge. The bridge was constructed as designed and that design did not meet the needs of the bridge because of design decisions including saving money and aesthetics of the bridge. The design review process of the bridge design was ineffective. There were some late in the game changes to the design and the designer of the bridge was respected and experienced and it's possible because of this his recommendations were not questioned as thoroughly as they could have been. Once we have added cause, we can also add evidence. Evidence is information that tells us why the cause should be included in our map. In this case, 
we know that suspender cables broke because of eyewitness statements and a video. We know that there were high stress on the cables because of calculations done in the analysis of the bridge failure. We know that the, bri the bridge load and the weight because of the design of the bridge. And we know that the large we know of the large twisting motion of the deck because of eyewitness statements and video. We can add evidence wherever possible to the causes that we include in our cause map. Once we have included all of the relevant causes and evidence within our cause map, we can brainstorm solutions. Some of the solutions that were incorporated to the replacement bridge or to bridge design after the failure of Tacoma Bridge were to use wind tunnel testing to ensure that the wind force on a bridge was properly accounted for, use of open lattice trusses instead of solid trusses to minimize the surface area on which wind acted, using a wider roadbed for longer bridges, and adding stiffening struts to ensure that the roadbed was not overly flexible. When you put it all together, you can see that our cause map has many causes, evidence boxes, and solution possibilities. You can see the analysis used to put together this cause map on our examples page at www.thinkreliability.com. You can also download the one-page PDF that explains the analysis that we have performed of the failure of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. You can also see more examples at www.thinkreliability.com. I hope you enjoyed the presentation of our root cause analysis case study of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge Collapse.